hello and welcome to yet an, another lecture on control system paper code pc ee 503 myself prothitora assistant professor of dr sudhir chandra sud institute of technology and sports complex department of electrical engineering today my topic is time domain analysis of a first order system lesson objective after end of this topic student will able to understand the responses of a first order system for different input signals So the time domain analysis definition. So time response. The time response of a system is the output response, which is function of time when input is applied. Means when an input that is called the excitation is applied to a particular system, the output means the response of the system which we obtain as a function of time is generally known as time response. So the time response of a control system consists of two parts. One is known as transient response. Second one is known as steady state response. Mathematically, the time response CT, that is the output response, is the summation of C suffix T within the time domain T plus CSS within the time domain T, where C suffix T there is a, is known as the, this part is known as the transient response and this part is known as the steady state response. So, the time response of a control system is consists of two responses. One is the transient res response, and another is the steady state response. And mathematical output of the time response is seen in this equation. Transient response. The transient response is the part of response which goes to zero as time increases. Mathematically, when limit, when t tends to infinity, the c tends for t within the time domain is equal to zero. This is the transient response when time goes to infinity, the response goes to zero. This is generally known as the transient response. The transient response may be exponential or oscillatory in nature. The nature of the transient response is may be in the exponential from or oscillatory in nature. Steady state. The steady state response is the part of the total response after transient is died. Means when the transient of the system was died, the response of the system is known as steady state response. Steady state error. The steady state response of the output doesn't does not match the input, then the system has a steady state error and it is denoted by P e suffix SS. The steady state response of the output doesn't match the input, then the system has an error called the steady state error. So we have learned about the 
transient response and the steady state response and also the steady state error. So the test, test signals for the time response. For analysis of the time response of a control system, the following input signals are used. The first one is called the step function. Consider an independent voltage source in series with a switch S. Yes. A voltage source in series with a switch S. Yes. The switch, when the switch is open, the voltage at terminal 1 and 2 is a zero. Voltage source is connected in series with the switch. When the switch is open, the voltage at the terminal 1 and 2 is 0. Mathematically, the voltage Vt is 0. When T, the range of the T, that is the time, is minus infinity to 0. When the switch is closed, at t equal to 0, at t equal to 0, the switch is closed and the output at the terminal 1 and 2 is the k. So it is seen that the output is k when the time is 0, at t equal to 0, the switch is closed. This is known as the step function. So it is given that mathematically the v t equal to k when t, the range of the t is 0 to infinity. So we have combined that above two equation. It is given that the Vt equal to zero when t belongs to minus infinity to zero, and Vt equal to k when t is zero to infinity. So a unit step function is denoted by ut and defined as ut equal to zero when t less than equal to zero, and ut equal to one when t greater than or equal to zero and it is clearly seen in this graph of the u still function. And if it is unit state function, then the magnitude of the k will be one. If this is k equal to one, this is called the unit state function. And it is clearly seen that u t equal to zero for t less than or equal to zero for t greater than or equal to zero u t equal to one and it is uh, this step function is known as unit step function when it is denoted by u t and the magnitude is one. So if I take the Laplace transformation of this u t, so the Laplace transformation says that the range will be zero to infinity and u t will be the value of the ut will be from 1. So if I take the Laplace transformation of that particular unit step function after doing the integration, so it will be given that the value is 1 by s. So the Laplace transformation of unit step function is 1 by s. Another function is known as RAM function. So RAM function generally starts from the origin and increase or decrease linearly with the time. So let, if RT is the RAM function, then when T greater less than equal to zero, it is clearly seen from the graph that it is zero to T the range. When the T is less than zero, the RT equal to zero. And when T equal to T greater than equal or T less than zero, the RT is zero. When the T greater than zero, the value of rt is kt. So it is following the function called y equal to mx, a straight line passing through the origin. It is when the k greater than zero. So this is known as the RAM function y equal to mx, a straight line passing through the origin. So if I take the Laplace transformation within the for the time period, that is the integration that we have done from 0 to infinity. The Laplace transformation of Rt, that is called the Rs, k by s square. Now, for k equal to unit ram base, the value of this k is 1. And when k less than 0, the nature of the slope is like that. 
previous one is for the greater than or equal to zero, and uh, second one is for this one is for greater than or equal to zero, and this one is for the n is than or equal to this k greater than or equal to zero, and this is for this one for k greater than or equal greater than for greater than zero for k greater than zero this one, and this is for k less than zero, and the Laplace transformation of the uh, ramp. Uh, for a ramp function is k by s square is the rs the laplace transformation of rt is the rs equal to k by s square and for unit ramp the k will be one parabolic function the value of rt is zero for t less than zero and is a quadratic function of time for t greater than zero so the parabolic function represent a signal that is one order faster than the Ramp function. The, para the parabolic function is defined as rt equal to zero when t less than zero, and when t greater than zero, the rt is kt squared by two. So for the unit parabolic function, the value of k is one. So rt equal to zero for t less than zero, and rt equal to k squared by two when t greater than zero. This is the parabolic function. The parabolic function that represents a signal that is one order faster than the ramp function. And this can be seen from the mathematical expression of the parabolic function. So if I taking the Laplace transformation over the integration over the time from zero to infinity, we get Laplace transformation of RT of a parabolic function that is RS is K by S cubed. And this is the representation of a parabolic so this is the RT point of T square by two. What is the power of t here? Power of t here is the two, and power of r t is one. So means which power is more? The power of t is more. So the graph time move towards the direction of the lowest power. Like this, this is uh, easiest way to draw the parabolic function. The power of r t is low compared to the t because t has the power of which of the which has the highest power? The t means the t square. So the graph is moved or rooted towards the low power of rt in this direction this is called the parabolic function so impulse response so consider the following two figures the first part has a width of T, this one, Com compare this, uh, just follow this particular pulse, this pulse and width of T from 0 to T, and the height of 1 by T, this one. So what is the area of this pulse? The area of this pulse is T into 1 by T, that is 1. So the area of this particular pulse is 1. If we uh, have the duration uh, half, uh, the duration and double the amplitude means the amplitude became uh, the time duration become half. So it will be became t by 2 and the amplitude become 2 by t. Uh, 2 by t. So uh, that we just get the second pulse. Means the duration, uh, the time duration became half and the amplitude became twice. So So it will that the total time period became 2t into t by 2 equal to 1. So area under the second pulse is also unit. So this is the general response of an impulse, general uh, figure of an impulse response. So denoted by del t. So we can say that as the duration of the pulse approaches 0, the amplitude approaches infinity, but the area of the pulse remains unity. 
the pulse for which the duration tends to zero and the amplitude tends to infinity. The duration tends to zero and the amplitude tends to infinity is called the impulse. Impulse function, also known as delta function. So mathematically, this function can be denoted as delta equal to zero when t not equal to zero and equal to infinity when t equal to zero. So thus the input function has a zero value everywhere except t equal to zero where the amplitude is infinite. So this is the general formation of the delta function which is mathematically known as delta equal to zero for t not equal to zero and equal to infinity for t equal to zero. So if I take the Laplace transformation of the input function, it is clearly that the input function is the derivative of a step unit. If a step unit, uh, if I do the derivative of a step unit, uh, we got an input function, it's the derivative of a step function, an impulse function. So Laplace transformation of the input function is the DDT of UT, that is Laplace transformation of DDT of UT, and it is given that the Laplace transformation of an impulse function is one. So if the unit step input is there, symbol is UT, and the Laplace transformation in that is the RF that is one by S. Unit ramp symbol is RT, so the Laplace function is one by S squared. Unit parabolic, so the Laplace transformation is one by S cube. Unit impulse, the symbol is delta, and the Laplace transformation is one. So now we start the time, time response of a first order system. Before approaching to the time response of a first order system, we have to know what is the order. The order system is defined by the number of independent energy sources, independent energy storage elements in the system, and the highest order of the linear differential equation that describes the system. In case of the transfer function, the order is the highest exponent in the transfer function. So order of the system is defined by the number of independent energy storage elements in the system or also the highest order of a linear differential equation that describes the system. In case of the transfer function, it is defined as the highest exponent in the transfer function. So let us the response of a first order system with unit step input, the excitation of the input that is we have provided. A first order system can be represented as Cs by Rs is one by the transfer function is ST plus one. So what is the output Cs? Cs is one by ST into Rs. So it is given that the, our input is the unit step input. So we have already known that the Laplace transformation of unit step input is 1 by S. So Cs now became, as the Rs became 1 by S. So they might just do this value of the Rs in this equation, the Cs became 1 by 1 by S into ST plus 1. So this is the general representation of a first order system. So after putting the partial fraction, we get C s equal to 1 by s minus t by 1 plus s t. So taking the inverse Laplace, we get c t equal to 1 minus s square minus t by tau. Now when t equal to t, so c t became, the value of the c t became 0.632. And this t is known as the time constant and defined as the time required for the signal to attain 63.2% of the final value or the steady state value, this is known as the time constant. So time constant T is defined as the time required for the signal to attain 63.2% of the final or the steady state value is known as the time constant. Actually, the time constant indicates how far the system reaches the final value. Smaller the time constant, faster is the system response. So here it is clearly seen that the response of C T equal to 1 minus T1 minus T by tau when input is the unit T 
came into our past of the system and the time constant that is given that our time required for a signal to attain 63.2 percent of its final or steady state value. So time constant that indicates that how far the system reaches the final value. So it is convenient that the smaller the time constant, faster is the system response. Now response to the fast order system with unit ramp input. So this is the general fast order system that we have known. And if I put a unit ramp input that RS is 1 by S squared. So C has become so that is the Laplace transformation of an unit. This is C stands for the output and R stands for the input. So we are very much concentrated on the output. So we have to find the CT in time domain. So RS in, in the Laplace domain. The input that we have provided is the ramp input. So Laplace value of the ramp input, uh, if a ramp input is provided, the Laplace value is one by a square. So one because it is we are providing a unit ramp function. So, so C has become one by a square into one plus H T. So after partial fraction, it is become one by a square minus T by S plus T into one by one. Uh, one by S plus one by T. C has become equal to 1 by S square minus T by S plus T into 1 by S plus 1 by T. So taking the inverse left class, we're getting C T equal to T minus T plus T into e to the power minus T by T. So what is the error signal? Error signal is the difference between the input and the output. So it is RT minus C T. So what is the RT? RT is the unit ramp input so means ramp generally follows the formation of y equal to m x means y equal to a t so here k is equal to one so r t equal to t so t minus t minus so just putting these values of the c t here we just get e t equal to t into one minus e to the power minus t by t so what is the steady state error steady state error has when t tends to infinity the value of this error ET is known as steady state error. The limiting value of this error of when T tends to infinity. So I just put in this value uh, when T tends to infinity, this value became the error value become T. So the steady state error is equal to T, where T is the time constant of the system. For smaller time constants, steady, steady state error will be small and the speed of the response will be increasing. So, uh, first the error signal that we have, uh, we have found out that there is a CT, then the error signal that is the difference between the input and output, and steady state error that when T stays to uh, infinity, the limiting value of the error when the T stays to infinity is known as steady state error. And we have seen that the steady state error that we, that we have get that it is equal to T, that T is the time constant of the system. For smaller value of the time constant, the steady state error will be small and the speed of the response will Increase. So, response of the fast order system with unit impulse function. So, if I put a unit impulse function that is the R is equal to 1, that we have already seen the Laplace transformation of an unit impulse signal is 1. So, C has become 1 by ST plus 1 into RS. So, C has become 1 by ST into 1. So, C has become uh, in this way that we can define the CS 1 by T into 1 by s plus 1 by t. So the taking the inverse left plus c t equal to 1 by t minus into h to power minus t by t, small t by t. So the steady state error, the unit ramp response of the system. This is the RT for the ramp and this is the c t that we have got obtained. So this error is known as the steady state error. This is the input signal, RT. This is the output versus time uh, graph. So this is called the RT. And this is the CT that we have obtained for a unit ramp response. So this is the CT. So this difference between uh, RT minus CT when T tends to infinity is known as steady state error for unit ramp response. And for the unit Impulse response, the signal became 
1 by t to the power minus t by tau this is the output ct and this is the time t so the that is the nature of the output or a unit in pulse response of the system so we have compared all the three responses for unit ramp into the rs is 1 by a square ct equal to output in the time domain equal to t minus if i summarize that thing the output is for the ramp input Laplace uh, domain output, uh, the input is 1 by a square. Uh, so the output CT is T minus T plus T into T e to the power minus T by T. For the step input, R is equal to 1, CT equal to 1 minus it over T by T. For unit impulse input, R is equal to 1, so CT equal to 1 by T into T to the power minus T by T. So it is clear that unit step input is the derivative of unit ramp input and unit impulse input is the derivative of unit step input. This is the property of LTI system. So it is clear that the unit step input is the derivative of unit ramp input and unit impulse input is the derivative of unit step input. So this is the property of LTI system. So we are now, uh, we have just seen that the time responses, it is only applicable for the stable uh, system. So it has two response, two parts. One is called the transient response and another is called the steady state response. The transient response, which is a uh, response which is initially observed for few milliseconds. The response which is observed for few milliseconds, it is known as transient response and the steady state response is the response of the system is obtained after a long time, that is when t tends to infinity. So the nature of the time response doesn't depend on the input applied of the system. It is dependent on the pole location of the transfer function. So the test signal that we have already used, that is the step, uh, impulse, ramp, parabolic, etc. And the steady state error means the difference between the reference input and the obtained output at t tends to infinity. So steady state error is depends on the input. So let us take a uh, system called the RC series circuit. This is the RC series circuit where the input is the VI and output is the V0. So if I take the Laplace of this, so R became R will remain R and the C will be uh, became uh, SC. So the total that is the Laplace system, uh, Laplace transformation when the input is VI and the output is V0 and the transfer function that is 1 by SRC for the RCC circuit and the feedback is 1. So the open loop transfer function that is GS is became 1 by SRC. And that, that is uh, can be represented by 1 by S tau, where tau is the time constant RC that we have already known about the time constant. So the closed loop transfer function uh, that is Cs by Rs became Gs by 1 plus Gs Hs. So here Hs equal to 1 because it is unit feedback system. So the transfer function became 1 by St plus 1. It is a first order system that is the highest power of S. So is 1. So this is then known as the first order system. And this is also we have already seen the first order system uh, or first order system transfer function. So now, when a step input uh, signal is given, that is the unit input signal, the unit is 1, so the Laplace is 1 by S. So the CS became in this way, after, uh, and this portion is given that we have already learned that this portion that we have found uh, by the partial by fraction method. And taking the inverse Laplace, this is known to us that the CT will become 1 by E. 1 minus into 1 minus t by tau. So this is the figure that uh, there is the RT value that is 1 means uh, the this is called the input of the system that is unit step input that is 1 and the CT value is 1 minus into 2 minus t by tau for different values of the t that t we have found that the, this is the different output. So the error became RT minus CT. So 1 minus 1, just putting the value of CT here, this one. So it is become to the power minus T by T. So when the T tends to infinity, the limiting value is known as the steady state error when the T tends to infinity. So limit T tends to infinity to the power minus T by T equal to 
true. So it is clear that for the given system, if the time constant increases, the nature of the system becomes sluggish in nature. If the time constant increases, the system becomes sluggish in nature. So if I use the CP out, output uh, of that particular response for even step input, and if I take the first order derivative at t equal to zero, it will become one by t, that is the slope of the system. As the slope this de decreases, the time constant increases. It is clear that as the slope decreases, the time constant will increase. And the system will get sluggish in nature as shown in the figure. The, as the, the system will become sluggish in the nature for unit step sigma. So as the slope, this is the first order derivative uh, of the output when t equal to zero, it is get one by t equal to slope. As the slope decreases, that slope is decreases, the time constant increases. Slope decreases means time constant increases and the system becomes sluggish in nature as it is seen in the figure. This is the, our input R equal to one, this is our output. And this different is known as error and when t tends to infinity, this different is known as steady state error. Now I am putting a ramp input that is R equal to t, unit ramp input and R is equal to one by s. Again, the output C has become R is into one by S T plus one. Just putting those values, it is C T that is that we, uh, we have received that T minus T by uh, T minus T plus T into over minus T by T that we have known. This is the nature of the R T Y per two MX, and this is the nature of the C T for different values of T that C T that we have obtained. This is the nature of the R T equal to T. So the error is RT minus CT, just putting the values of RT equal to T and putting the CT value, so we are getting the error is T minus T into it to the power minus T by T. So steady state error means when limit T tends to infinity, this error became T. So the question will arrive that what is the nature of the response? The nature of a response means that how fast or the slow the system operates. So it is seen that as the t increases, the steady state error increases and the uh, and vice versa. As the t increases, the nature of the system became totally sluggish in nature. So this is for the, the nature of the system became sluggish in nature. So nature of the system will depend means the how fast or slow the system operates. So this is an RC circuit, uh, fast order circuit uh, that we have already uh, in an RC uh, series circuit, a fast order circuit that we have already, fast order system that we have already seen. So today we have seen that uh, different input signals and their formation and along with that if those signals are applied for a fast order system, how the responses that we obtain from a fast order system that we also seen today. Thank you.